This is Twit. The holy grail for 2022, of course, will be if Apple announces its first virtual reality headset with some AR featured code name N301. That rolls off the tongue. And it's accompanying ROS, no, code named Oak. Oak. <laughs> Real-time operating did they, system? Did they, did they steal away Sony no, from Sony reality to come up with these system. product names? Reality operating right. system. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Ooh, that sounds good. Uh, but yeah. the timeline for that product has been has slipped before Apple originally targeted 2020, then WWC 2021, then WWC D, WWDC well, yeah, do you remember? I don't, I don't, do you remember when Joanna asked asked uh, Craig about that during your interview? And she's like, how's the software going for the for the mixed reality headset? He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, right. It was just one of well, the best moments of 2021. They, they don't pre-announce. So all of this buzz is caused by people like Gurman. Well, but but I think that the other thing is that they, uh, when you look at the trajectory of the rollout, they haven't been ready to roll it out, and has nothing to do with the hardware. They don't, they haven't put all the pieces in place to build the ecosystem around the hardware. So I don't know if they're really behind. Like I, I know that he says that. I'm not clear that they are. I think that if you look at what they're doing as far as the rollout goes with object capture, um, with what we think will be eventually, you know, moving USDZ across the entire platform. Um, those things all want to happen before the hardware comes out because it's going to create the ecosystem that makes the hardware work better. This is the problem that Google had. Google was five years ahead, six years ahead, something like that. But they didn't have an ecosystem to support the, the, the platform itself. And Apple has been slowly putting all the pieces together. But those pieces haven't been, and they feel like they've been going in a very, you know, um, measured pace not like they're behind or ahead but just like this is the next thing i would give you once you know how to do this once once we give you lidar the next thing i'm going to give you is object capture the next thing i'm going to do is let you take that object capture and put it into keynote and pages the next thing i'm going to do you know th those things have to happen before you put out a piece of hardware uh, you, if, if if you're not in a rush if you're not trying to make money or you're not trying to beat anybody you're just trying to win <laughs> like, like with yeah. brutal with brutal efficiency you would do it just just slowly plot all these pieces out because keynote and pages will create a massive demand for 3D models, which will then set up for the AR. Yeah, but I, I feel like there's a possibility that we're all being a little bit myopic here, that uh, we're thinking that the big thing that we hopefully will see next is going to be some sort of a mixed reality headset or mixed reality goggles that will deliver on the promise of object capture of, uh, again, interactive 3D models, uh, thing, things, that, things that really, really uh, manipulate our environment around us. I'm starting to I'm starting to become closer to the uh, more more affectionate with the idea that the first thing that they roll out will be something that's more similar to the Apple Watch, where it's just it's not there to overlay things into your field of vision. It's not there to show you crack a toe exploding on your desktop. It's there so that while you're taking your walk, while you're working out, while you're doing whatever, you see a notification appear in your in the upper left corner of your vision, similar to what an Apple Watch would deliver. Just simply saying by the way if you want to if you want to notice this there's something here for you to take a look at if you don't if you want to ignore it completely by all means ignore it completely or asking it a question and getting a quick answer something like imagine google glass but with 2021 technology and also designed by apple that i think that yeah. would be more let me that, let me I, read I, I, you I do, a little uh, blog comment on philip elmer dewitt's ped30.com from um thomas williams who i think encapsulates our dreams and hopes <laughs> we'll see if it's true. He, he says, said, what, "What are those? I, I <laughs> our hopes and I used dreams." I have those in 2019. Yes, the real secret sauce he writes in Driver, literally and figuratively for Apple moving forward is their silicon paired with 5G networks. Investors huh. need not fully comprehend 10 teraflops of performance, a 16-core neural engine, a secure enclave, multiple media engines supporting ProRes media encoding, decoding, and unified memory architecture. All they need to know now is the competition may never really catch up. These system-on-a-chip features translate to incredible amateur pro video performance, but also workable voice control over devices that formerly required a keyboard. Augmented reality glass in my spectacles is one thing, Smart AR glass in my windshield is game changing. Uh, he imagines a vision uh, of a future with AR glass paired with high res cameras, IR and LiDAR sensors, which can change night driving, AR assisted manufacturing and repair. Um, I, I mean, 
he's he's I think basically I, saying I think it's way simpler than that. Like the uh, uh, Tim Cook is willing to talk about AR, VR, AI, and automation because again, they're not products to him; they're technologies. Like talking about LCD or OLED are technologies. And I think we'll we'll for, it's going to be a very simple rollout the way we used to see. Uh, like the, the original iMac had a, a CRT display, but then the, it went to LCD, and you couldn't make an app an iPhone unless you had an LCD. There was no CRT iPhone, so that technology enabled new products, and these technologies will enable new products. But at first, they're going to be extensions of existing products. So the one that's going to ship first, like my best understanding, is something like an Apple TV for your head, it's, it, because the AR stuff is harder. So it's going to be it's going to have its own processor, and it. it's going to go all around your head, and it's going to focus on immersive experiences like the Apple TV does. The fit the television, the gaming, the education. And then a couple of years later is going to be what Andy was talking about, the Apple Watch, original Apple Watch style device that has to fit into glasses. So it's going to be way more restricted. It's going to lean on the phone a lot in the beginning. And it's all its job is going to be is to show you notifications and glanceable information without you even having to turn your wrist. So it's just, it's a level of, inc of, uh, of convenience increase. And then over time, those technologies will get built into all sorts of products the way that, that LCDs did and eventually OLEDs did. And then Apple just rolls out yeah. the next decade. And I think if Apple wasn't going to put objects in front of us, they wouldn't be doing these little things around their events that are showing objects <laughs> that they're putting in there. I mean, it's they tend to be pretty methodical about those things. And so I think that oh, yeah. there's, there. so I think that they're, they're definitely planning. And I do think that Immersive is a lot easier than AR in a lot of ways. AR is easier to do on the phone. Immersive is easier to do as as a headset because it, it you can you have more room to put electronics and so on and so forth. So I do agree with Renee that I think that we'll see something probably immersive as we go through it. But I do think it's going to be a a pretty big game changer when that when it happens. And of course, like everything else, it'll start small, like the watch and like everything. But but I think that the integration of all the because Apple has a different setup where they have, you know, Motion and Final Cut are great video apps, but they're really, obviously, there's 3D engines and all kinds of stuff, stuff yeah. being put into them. That's for the AR and VR, not for, you know, a straight yeah. video distribution. I, I, and so they have those tools. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with you that the, that the, the the fact that Apple is putting so much investment in creation of 3D objects, it's obvious that that's where that's where they're going. But my my stumbling block has always been when you're talking about mixed reality headsets or mixed reality goggles, I keep thinking of all the electric cars that they tried to build before lithium batteries came along. It's fine. It'll it'll you can have these lead acid batteries in the trunk. It will power the car for a certain amount of time, but it's simply not going to be the sort of thing. It's it's not going to it's not going to be the technology that will enable this thing that we're kind of dreaming about and took these high density batteries to give us cars that are actually function like cars, have the range of cars, have the styling of cars. Uh, and I think that we, we're running into the same sort of technological limitation with mixed reality goggles where how do we get a display technology that will give you a field of vision that most people will that will deliver the effect that you want while also being compact enough and power uh, power. Uh, non-hungry enough to give you a wearable piece of kit that you would actually want to wear when you're not being given a virtual walkthrough of what your new kitchen remodel is well, but maybe like. we're, maybe that's, we're that's focusing on the glasses are um, uh, a red heron uh, maybe we're maybe i mean this idea yeah. of a windshield I mean, sounds very I'll, I'll intriguing a, a heads up think, windshield not that i mean i think you wouldn't invest in a future where people are still driving their own cars right that's the thing i think that if you're throwing the ball to where the receiver is going to be as opposed to where it is yeah. right now you're not going to build I mean, I think that we're, there's a there's a moment for the next three to five years where we're still building like a high tech it's not thinking a long -term forward future. Yeah. The long term future is that yeah. cars aren't going to have any yeah. windshields. So what else would you put uh, <laughs> heads up in? instead of wearing these things? Well, the thing is, is that that we're already seeing a lot of these with, you know, um, uh, the stuff that 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 we're already doing and building with USDZ is stuff that I can just send you a USDZ. And I talked about it earlier. If you go to something like clarity.io, you can download a USDZ that we built that, um, I, I have that to be honest, is, I feel like it. this is gimmicky. I don't, I don't, it doesn't, you know, every uh, demo I've seen is like you go to a restaurant and the menu shows you the three. It's just not, but, to me, it but, doesn't, it doesn't speak to me as something I need. So, but the, but the thing I, is, is that, that what, yet. what, what, what's happening right now and what we're figuring out right now is how to, um, use the LIDAR that we have, and we don't have this working yet, but but using the LIDAR we have to attach it. So like I have an object and I want to see what that looks like. And that's what a lot of people are working on is I have an object that I want to figure out, does this fit here? Um, and 
you know, and, and it's, and, and I can just pop it out and look at it and does it fit here? What does it look like when I rotate it around? Um, those are, those are things that are pretty utilitarian. And I will say that we've worked with some folks that as soon as the sales folks opened it up on their iPad, they wanted every object that their company owns that makes in, in this format, because now they can sit there and talk to their clients with it. And those are, those are not whiz bang things. This is just, it's a lot easier than carrying a case full of objects around. Um, and, and they can show it and talk about it and highlight it and so on and so forth. And so I think that those are going to be really interesting, um, you know, pieces of that puzzle. Uh, and so I, you know, I, and, and again, you can make things, you know, I, you know, make little things very, very big <laughs> and walk around them and study them. And I think from an education and sales perspective, um, that kind of stuff is just getting started. And a lot of it has been creating the geometry that go into that even now is pretty hard. You know, so the object capture is getting better, but that's what killed us when we were doing stuff for Google was um, not for Google, but for the Google, um, uh, you know, for the phones, Tango. the Tango. The problem we had with Tango was getting the geometry in. We had to use Unity at the time to do that. And so there was like a huge lift. What we're getting to now is you can kind of wave your <laughs> you can wave your phone at something and, and have a 3D <laughs> model, you know, and that's a that's a big that's a big deal. And it's not done yet. But as that matures and that anybody can grab onto anything and throw it into their into their keynote document or their or send it to somebody like this is what it's going to look like. Um, you know, I'm doing a. I'm I think you live in this. a kind of specialized world where that's valuable. I don't think that the normal people are saying, "Gosh, I wish I could put a 3D object in my keynote document." I I, do, I think that this yeah, is a specialty thing. I don't. No, see they this. wouldn't see it though. That's like infrastructure. But, All they'll see is they'll have their headset or glasses on. They'll go to a virtual thing. They'll press it, and then they'll have like a model of the dress they want or the right. lamp they want must, or something. I'm, I'm getting a little John C. Dvoracky in my old age, but. I don't buy it. <laughs> what happens though is that when it comes to sales, you know, like um, what happens for sales guys that are, that are, that are, you know, sales folks that are doing this is they get their, their clock cleaned by somebody who has the, a superior technology and then they want to know how to do that. And so you know, it's the, great the, the for sales. It doesn't still, again, that doesn't really sell me particularly. That's, that's depressing. Uh, okay. Good like business. A car, a car <laughs> salesman so is going to, yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. These are not things that uh, uh, your Again, average it, person who's using. Memoji uh, Leo needs a Lamborghini. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Memoji yeah. Leo needs a Lamborghini. Well, but, I, but it's, 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 it's where things start and then they become normalized, you know? And so, so the thing is, is that I, I do think that, um, you know, the tools are still a little rudimentary, but when you, I mean, it's, it's a real problem when you go, to, number one, when you go and decide what, what shelving you want in a Kia, knowing where it actually is, wh wh whether it'll fit where you think you're going to put it or how you're going to do it is a thing, you know, and, <laughs> and everyone's measuring all this stuff and you can get yeah. to a point where you just kind of go like this and now I know. And then the second thing is really how to build it is what you need okay. is, is how to do that. You know, like that's, okay. the, that's I, the, I don't thing. see it changing the world, but you know what? I, I'm willing to be wrong. What's your time frame? Five years, 10 years? For the, for what? For any of this. Well, the, we've been talking that, about this. I mean, Ikea's had an app on my phone. Five years for the for glasses? a long time. Glasses, the glasses are five years out. I, think, I don't I think know if the, glasses I think the immersive really... is probably less than 18 months. Yeah. All right. So yeah. I think the immersive, I think that the AR is probably three to five. Yeah. You know, it's probably, but but the, but again, there's a, I think the keynote pages thing is probably this this year. It's probably this year or next spring. Yeah, you know, I mean, Microsoft tried this close. about three years ago and nobody wanted it and they dropped it. They had a 3D oh, paint. They had AR Clippy. Do you imagine? <laughs> I, I just well, I feel Hololens like has been this Hololens is a technology has been pretty successful that people for Microsoft. are excited about that is not going to change the world. Hololens has been yeah, but again, really successful again in a, in a narrow niche, not yeah, in that's, a mainstream but that's how you market. start. Well, that's how you start. Okay, <laughs> all right. So they're they're making a lot of money with that with that headset. You know, like it's not you know they're and they're doing. It's I mean, all Minecraft, that stuff Leo. is Minecraft's going to drive yeah, Minecraft. this. I mean, completely. it is stunning. Like the stuff when you when you put on a Hololens at a work site and you can see where everything's supposed to be, you know, you realize that there's some future there that you're going to get, this is going to become normal. Like, and, and there's a lot of things. When, when people got cars, they were really expensive and quirky and didn't work, like in, in 1890. You know, like they were like, that's weird. Like, no one's going to use that. <laughs> like, like, you know, my horse goes a lot this. faster in a lot of other places than uh, that. I think that's it's stupid. appropriate for Apple to say, well, we're going to predict what's going to happen in 10 years and we're going to aim for that. Doesn't mean it's going to happen.